Hey guys, welcome to a new video. I've decided to try the other angle today and we're doing a non-scripted impromptu video because these, the Quinn LED ESP32 ABE, are now in, well, let's say limited availability, but let's quickly talk about it. So first off, for the people who haven't been waiting for this board, uh, a little while back I made my own ESP32 development board to go with my uh, Quinn LED boards, and that is called the Quinn LED uh, ESP32 AB antenna board, so antenna board is right here, or you can have the AE, that is ex antenna external, so you can use like, uh, you know, like external antennas. Um, but a third variant was always announced, but it's taking a little bit longer to get that out than I would have liked. But that is, and it says it, I think you can read it, the Quinn LED ESP32 ABE. So that means antenna board. You can, you can see the little antenna poking out over here. But it comes with an Ethernet jack. So you can, well, hook up Ethernet. And, uh, well, for some... Uh, users out there who are running either like WLED or ESP Home or even their custom code, they've been looking for a fairly affordable Ethernet board. And well, this one happens to come in a form factor that you can just slot it into a Quinn LED DIG Uno or a Quinn LED DIG Quad. Now, there are some limitations, and we'll go over those in a little bit, but yeah. Uh, for everyone who's been waiting for these, these are now available in the Worldwide store and in the Dr. Z store, but in limited amount. And with that, I mean, we have a decent amount of them, but they are mostly going to be sold linked to a dig quad. Now, the reason for that is multitude. Uh, first off, developing the Ethernet board took a little while to get it right. And well, these versions I know are right. I've been testing these for months. They're perfect or well, any, never, and nothing is ever perfect, but they work really, really well and are perfectly stable. Um, but getting these made, uh, we had some hurdles in production. Uh, I'll spare you all the details, but basically the production house that was supposed to assemble them well, if you pull this apart, and I don't recommend you do this, this will only be sold as an assembled unit. So it's not like you can take a standard AB and plug this little top board on top of it. It'll always come assembled like that and they are not available separately. But we told the board house, hey, give us a few hundred, let's say, uh, ESP32 boards with these long pins. And when we got them, they soldered on the short pins. But we didn't have more ESP32s at that moment. So we first had to make new ESP32 boards, but we had to get the WRU modules from Espressive and new orders and more capital and more time. And when they did that, they we finally got the new order made. Then somehow they did something wrong with the pins and we had to correct that again and well, it took about one and a half to two months longer than I wanted for these to come out. And they are out right now, but because of all the issues, they are in limited fashion. And we've basically had to decide what we're going to bundle with it. And we've decided that that will be the dig quad. Now, the, it's not like there aren't going to be any, uh, like a dig uno uh, ABE. They, those will be for sale. And also, for the people I know who, who are going to ask this in the comments, yes, they will also be sold separately so that you can just use your uh, micro or micro. We don't use micro USB anymore. We use USB C so that you can put USB C power in there and then uh, put an Ethernet cable in there. And that'll work perfectly for WLED or ESP Home or whatever kind of code you'd want to run on it. Uh, but for right now, because the modules are limited 
uh, they're mostly bundled with the dig quad. There will be some available, as I said, but we don't have a lot of those. That will be coming. We are making more stock and getting everything arranged to do production and getting it all done. But it's been a ride. Uh, but I'm really happy that these are now finally here because with all three, the ecosystem I set out to create with the board antenna, external antenna, or if your Wi-Fi sucks or you want to run real-time pixel data or something like that, or you have another requirement that you want to have an ethernet connection in a D1 mini ESP32 form factor. So this will also work on other boards, but check the pin out because the ethernet board uses 10 GPIO pins that cannot be changed. Um, it'll work in all those cases. Now, it's good that I started about that. There are some limitations. Oh, uh, one version I don't have here to show you. There will also be a legacy version of this ESP32 ABE, so with the Ethernet. And uh, there is a compatibility guide on my website. We'll walk through it in a little bit. Uh, that will show you what will work and what will not work with the older version boards. So with the new version boards, those have been adjusted with Ethernet in mind. So all functions like the Q1 to Q4 pins and the relay pin and the temperature sensor and all that stuff, all LED channels, that will all work with all of the ESP32 boards. But if you have a legacy board, as I said, it'll, it takes up a lot of GPIO pins and some of those on the legacy boards were used for other functions. Now on a Dig Uno, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling into that article anyway. Anyway, I'll, I'll show you the article on the screen. The main issues are on a Dig Uno, uh, the two LED channels will work. So LED one and two or L1D and L1C and forget any other functionality. <laughs> so no Q1 to Q4 pins, no button pin, uh, no temperature sensor, uh, no microphone, I think. Uh, forget everything else, uh, but you can run two channels of LEDs and five volt and 12 volt compatibility still works. Uh, on the older dig quad, and there's a, there's one on my wall right there. That's one of my first or pretty old prototypes still going strong. Um, that has a bit more limitations. Forget Q1 to Q4, the button audio again, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but also forget uh, channel four. So channel one to three will work fine with the legacy ESP32 ABE on there. Uh, and then there is a big caveat uh, on the, those boards. I didn't use a buck converter, but I use a staged linear converters to kind of get the price down for you guys. Uh, that worked fine, but the ethernet board does put a bit more load on it. Now the new boards have these magic auto voltage, auto input, five volt to 24 volt dual input switching, blah, uh, technology on there. The old boards do not. Um, those will run at 5 volt. That's fine. Or you can use the 5 volt EXT function if you're running 12 volt LEDs. You cannot run it in 12 volt mode because the regulator, the stage regulators I have on there will overheat because of the extra draw the Ethernet board will ask of them. So there's still ways to run it, but yeah, you have to be selective. As said, I've written all of this out in an article, what are the limitations, and then reversed what does still work. And um, if you want to build your own stuff with uh, an ethernet board, I also have an, an in-depth article about which pins that I use, so that you can't use in your own sketches. And I have code available, uh, well, how to set it up in WLED, how to set it up in ESP Home, and how to set up uh, I set it up a normal Arduino, for instance, so that, as I said, if you have D1 Mini or D1 Mini 32 compatible boards, you can upgrade them to Ethernet with this little board. Um, and yeah, that is basically most that I wanted to say right now. The ABE versions are here in a limited fashion. If you were looking to buy a dig quad and have Ethernet on it to do like your real-time Christmas uh, pixel shows and stuff like that, I've tested it up to... I think at least 1200 pixels or 1600, a lot. And I didn't notice any problems. And the streaming of the LED data, 
even the WLED interface using the Ethernet version is so much better <laughs> than over Wi-Fi. It's insane. It, it responds quicker and even streaming 1200 LEDs at, I think I even did 60 frames per second, zero hiccups, zero lag, and zero issues basically doing that for hours and hours. So uh, if you were looking to do that for your Christmas displays, uh, or if you wanted to spread these out in your yard where you don't have Wi-Fi coverage, you could get a Dig Uno with two channels, for instance. Um, all good. As I said, those other variants will become available over time, but the combined version and some of the other versions are in stock right now at Worldwide and at Dr. Z's. Um, if you do pick up one, thank you very much. Uh, I, I spend a lot of time on this stuff, but I do it all for you guys. And uh, the, 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 the crazy amount of thanks I always get is very much appreciated. And if you do decide to buy one or a few of these boards, that is also very much appreciated. Well, this video has been going on long enough. Thank you for watching. Much more content to come. I've been working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So, um, I hope you are all upgrading your arms with 5G booster shots. My next one will be, well, tomorrow when this video releases. And uh, I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.